there, it's Melissa from designsbylittlebee.com and today we're going to do a tutorial on a no exposed stitches zipper bag. Zipper bags are one of my, probably my very favorite in the hoop embroidery project because they're useful, they're practical, um, it's one of those things you make and you know that you or someone you love and care about or someone who buys it from you um, are going to really enjoy using and get a lot of use out of. For the purposes of this tutorial, we know the three types of zipper bags. The first is the kind with exposed seams on the inside. That is, when you open it up, you can see the raw edges where, you, where your fabric was sewn and flipped inside out. These are very easy to do. You just stitch a few squares, you cut around your project, you unzip the zipper and flip it inside out, and you're done. The exposed seams style of zipper bag is great for uh, if you're just whipping something up for yourself, maybe if you're making something for a child and you know they're going to pretty much destroy it so you just want something quick and easy. Then as you get more experienced with zipper bags or maybe you want to gift it to someone or you want to sell them somewhere, you'll start doing the kind that has no exposed seams on the inside. And the only difference between the non-exposed seams and the exposed seams on the inside is one extra step of turning the project inside out before you open the zipper and turn it again. So which one you would use just depends on the given project, uh, the recipient, what you're going to do with it, how, com how much time you have to do it. Then there's a third type of zipper bag that includes a couple of extra steps. It's a little more complicated and involved. But the goal of this bag, that I, I called it the flipper zipper bag so that I can keep it straight in my head, because you flip the pieces of the bag several times. And the reason you do that is so that you can stitch on the outside of the project, whether it's words, a monogram, uh, your logo, whatever you're stitching. And then, oops. And then on the inside, you don't see any of those stitches. You see how this one says squad goals and it's got four little faces. And then on the inside, it's beautifully lined. There's none of that backing stitches. Now for me, when I'm making something for myself, I usually just do the kind that's easy and you can see the stitches on the inside because I don't care. I'm just putting, if I'm just putting um, travel stuff for a trip or a couple of flash drives or um, some shampoo and stuff for the gym, I just use that kind for myself. But if you're going to sell them or if you're going to gift it to someone and you really want a super professional look, you might want to try this flipper zipper or no exposed stitches on the inside bag because it looks, I mean, it looks really great, I have to admit. So today I'm going to be making a new bag that I finished this week and it is that style where you're going to flip it inside out because we don't want any of the outside stitching showing on the inside. Keep in mind when you're making this bag that you can watch this tutorial for any style of the no exposed stitching on the inside bags. This one particu in particular is a uh, video game controller shape and has those stitches on the front, but you can use this tutorial for any style of no exposed stitches bag, whether it has a, a monogram that you added, or if it's this one right here, or if you're gonna toss your logo onto something, personalize it with a name, or if it has a little face, or whatever, the steps are the same. The only difference in this one and the one that you might be making is um, the detailed stitches on the outside. And finally, a very important question is what materials will I need for this project? Well, first and foremost, stabilizer, very important question. I use a soft cutaway stabilizer, like medium weight, but make sure it's soft and not papery because your stabilizer will be trapped in between these pieces of your project. This the stabilizer is in here right now, but I use a really soft so you don't hear it like crinkle or it's not rough. You'll need a zipper. The size depends on the project you're using. If it's horizontal to your hoop and you have a seven inch hoop, it's probably like an eight to nine inch zipper. If you're making a tall bag that goes vertically in your hoop and you're making a five by seven, you'll need a six inch zipper. Now your instructions should tell you that, but you can kind of eyeball it if you can see the project and you know what hoop size you're using. I use a little piece of ribbon or maybe fold over elastic for a little handle if you want one. And as far as the fabric that you're using, you can use anything. I like to use a good old fashioned cotton. If you're trying to make a more padded bag with a, a thicker look, you'll need extra pieces of felt 
or batting, you know, like the quilting batting. I don't usually use that, but I do tell you what steps to put it in if you'd like to. So with all that said, I've got the design loaded up into my machine and I'm going to get started. I've got my hoop ready with my cutaway stabilizer. I've actually hooped two pieces and layered them because I'm not really that comfortable using a hoop. I usually use my fast frames and I just want to give myself that extra backup in case I uh, mess it up somehow by not hooping it well enough. So I've got it tightened up and the first two steps of the flipper zipper bag you've already done before. You know them. It is a placement and a tack down for your zipper. The first one is placement. Ooh, that scared me for a minute. <laughs> it was going so far over. Um, so the first one is placement. I'm gonna have it stop there and I'll be right back. Now you've got your placement lines for your zipper. Sometimes I call those railroad tracks uh, just for the sake of simplicity or to keep it a little interesting. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your zipper, make sure that the ends go um, past your lines. You see what I'm saying? Like it has to be you know, half an inch to an inch longer than your placement lines. And you want to place it right between those lines. And the next step will just secure that zipper down with a quick running stitch, just like that one, but closer in. And you might want to take a piece of tape. You can pin. Um, since you only need this for a second, I like to just slap a piece of tape on there because you only need that, you only need it to situate itself for like you know 15 seconds so I like to put a little piece of tape there on either end make sure it's nice and in the middle and run the next step which will tack down your zipper right near the teeth all right now you get to see a little bit more of my messy room and I'm going to show you why I call this a flipper zipper bag because you flip the pieces. So what I mean by that, take your hoop off and you want to grab your two larger portions of fabric. I do the bottom portions that have a that are going to have most of the design on them first, always. So you want to take your two, you have your top pieces and your bottom pieces under the zipper. Take your bottom pieces, flip your hoop over, and take the piece that's going to be the lining and you're going to place it right side down aligned with the bottom train track of your zipper. You see if you're looking at your hoop upside down you have the four lines that we use to to tuck your zipper in place. Line your your inner fabric, your lining fabric right side down with the bottom train track line. That's the bottom of your zipper. And I would tape it because I don't like pins in the bottom of my, on the bottom of my hoop. So I like to just tape this one. And it's another instance where you only need it there for just a minute while you tack it in place. Now, flip your hoop over. And you're going to do the exact same thing with the front piece. This is the piece that's the front. You're going to stitch your pattern on it. You're going to line it up right side down, so if this were a printed pattern like with polka dots, the polka dots would go here, right side down, and align it, it's a little easier this time because you can see the zipper, align it with the bottom of your zipper. And you can tape that in place, you can pin it at the very, very edges if you like, make sure the pins are away from the, the ends of where your uh, zipper stitches are, or you can tape it because you only need it there for 10 seconds for it to tack that down. So adhere that, um, secure that however you'd like, take it back to your machine and we'll stitch that next step. When you bring your hoop back to your machine, make sure that you take, you take extra caution to push your lining piece that's under there back so it's not folded up under your hoop. Make sure you can reach out and touch it along the underside of your hoop or the back side of your hoop because if it gets stuck under there, you'll have to rip those stitches out and do it all over again. So make sure that your lining piece is where it's supposed to be, where you taped it or, or pinned it. Make sure that your top piece is secure. And then you're going to run this next step, which is a bean stitch, which will secure both of these pieces down.
Now you want to take the pins or tape off of the front lining piece. And I'll give you a little tip, something I like to do, is I like to take my hoop off and check underneath and make sure that that lining piece stitched properly under there, that it wasn't folded or it didn't wrinkle up or stitch in a weird way because you won't have another opportunity to fix that. So I like to look under, like I'm using, um, I have a multi-needle, so I can just look under and I say, okay, looks great. And then I move on to the top piece. Take your tape or pins out of the top, the top piece and pull it, flip it over that bean stitch. And you want to secure it down in this position, nice and flat. I like to pin mine a bazillion times because this is the only opportunity you'll get to pin it and you want to make sure that whatever embroidery you're doing on the front looks great. So I like to get super close to the edge and then I also keep a watchful eye on the embroidery to make sure I didn't pin too close to the stitch path. But I like to pin like seven or eight pins. And another thing I'd like you to know I'm not doing, I'm not using any sort of batting or felt with this bag because it's pretty small and I don't want to go through that torture of trying to turn it inside out with batting underneath it. But if you were going to use batting or a piece of felt to thicken up the bag, to give it a little padding, you would want to put that underneath before you pin. Like you slide it under there against that bean stitch and then flip your piece over if that makes sense. I usually don't use felt or batting because I'm lazy <laughs> and then you have to turn that big thick piece of fabric inside out and that's hard. So I have used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins. I've pinned all around the edge of my fabric. I'm gonna add another one just for the heck of it. And the next step is to stitch out the detail of the bag, whatever that may be. Again, I do all mine the same way. The flipping is exactly the same. It just depends on what uh, pattern you're using on the outside. This one in particular is a game controller, a video game zipper bag. If you were doing a uh, the, the pizza, my round pizza bag, you would do the bottom half of the pizza first. If you were adding your own monogram and you were using this method, you would add the monogram now. Whatever embroidery you have for this project, do it now and then come back.
take your hoop off of your machine and take a moment to admire your beautiful work. Check that out. That's going to look great. Okay. So now you're going to flip your hoop over and now it's time to put this liner piece in place in its permanent home. Now if you're a spatial and visual learner like me, you've probably, you know what we're going to do with this. Check that out. That is how we hide those ugly inside stitches. This is how we make a fully lined bag. So with this now, this liner piece is going to stay here for the remainder of your project. So you can adhere it in a permanent way, um, like or uh, secure it in a permanent way, like take out one of your pins from the front. I like to take out a pin from the front and repin it, being sure to catch that liner this time. And these will stay there for the remainder of your project. Now, now that you've done that, you already know the next step. Grab your two top pieces, that's the one that's going to go in the front and the one that's going to be your liner, and you're going to do the exact same thing that you did with those bottom pieces. You want to take it right side down, flip your hoop over, lining piece, right side down, straight edge against the top train track of your zipper and you want to tape that in place. I'm sorry about this tape. Oh, I know it's so loud, I'm sorry. Um, just tape that piece in place because it's only got to be there for a second. Don't eat tape. Okay, so take that and I'm gonna tape it really well to make sure it stays in place, make sure it's lined up neatly. Okay, now flip your hoop over and do the same thing with the front piece right side down and pin it, or tape it, against the edge of the top of your zipper. We're doing the same thing as we did for the bottom, just the top half instead of the bottom half. So my pins are over there, but I'll take my pins and I'll pin the edges, and we're going to take this back to our machine, and we're going to do the exact same thing that we just did for the bottom. When you place your hoop back on your machine, again, I encourage you to check underneath your hoop and make sure that that top liner piece uh, went in there the right way. I'm gonna just take a peek under there. Looks good, still taped. My top piece is pinned and I'm going to run the next step which is a quick bean stitch to secure both of those. Now that that's done you can unpin your top outer piece and if your particular design has any stitching on the top you want to flip this top piece over and do the stitching, just like we did for the bottom piece. If you're using a piece of felt or batting to pad your design, you want to put that in now flush with this line and then properly secure that top piece down while you stitch. Now this particular bag that I'm working on doesn't have any stitching at the top, so I'm going to unhoop, I mean not unhoop, oh my gosh no, I'm going to take my hoop off my machine, I'm going to take that lining piece and I'm going to bring it up as well because it's done now. So now if you look at the back you see that this is how these pieces will stay for the remainder of your project. Now you want to pin both of those pieces into place. I'm going to pin my top piece and my lining piece really well. There's one because there's only two more steps. And here's two pins. Okay, so now my top pieces are both secured. Check underneath your hoop to make sure that the lining piece and the top piece are properly secured. This is how your bag's going to look in the end. Very important step, grab your zipper pull and pull it out towards the inside of your project, like towards the middle or a third. So once your zipper pull is pulled back into the middle of your design so it's out of the way, if you forget to do that, you will stitch that zipper pull right out of your bag. And then you can't use the zipper. Don't ask me how I know that. 
Now don't ask me how many times I've done that. Stop! Pause for a minute. I forgot to make this part of the video while my project was still in the hoop, so I wanted to add it in right now. If you're adding any extra things that aren't included in the original project directions, like straps for a crossbody bag, or if you want to add, like here, I just added these little extra ribbons so that I can add a crossbody later if I want. If you're adding extra ribbons or fold over elastic anywhere around, this is the step where you need to put those down and pin them or tape them before you do the next step. Now, if you want to tack down those accessories before you go on, but that step isn't included in the design, no biggie. Just run your machine back or forward the stitches until you have one that's close to the outline where your accessories are and run those, those few stitches just over your straps or your ribbons or what have you to get them tacked down. Then go on to the next step. Okay. So the next two steps are just like any other zipper bag. You want to take your back piece of your bag, and I'm sorry about that, this crazy glare. I can't get rid of it, okay. So you wanna take the back piece of your bag and you want to put it right side down on top of your project, okay? And you can pin it around the edges if you'd like. Also, if you're using a piece of batting or felt, put that on there now too. Put it on top. I'm not, but you can. So you want it face down, okay? And then you're going to run the next step which will stitch a square all the way around your project, okay? You may want to look underneath your hoop and just one more time make sure that all these pieces underneath are secure and where they're supposed to be before you do this, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch that square all the way around. All right, so now you see your square. Now the final step is to take your hoop off of your machine, flip it over, and you see the back of your design. You want to put your lining piece, that's when you open the zipper, what you'll see on the inside, right side down on your hoop, and you want to pin that in place. Make sure you pin out of the stitch path. You want to place your lining piece um, right side down and I like to think of it like you'll see your project on the hoop like a sandwich like the right sides are facing together like um, your mustard and your mayonnaise and your condiments on your sandwich you wouldn't have those on the outside you want all the right sides facing in and make sure all these edges if you have pieces of fabric sticking out like you can see down here make sure they're all you know, out of the way so you don't end up with a wrinkled mess under there. So with that lining piece securely underneath your hoop, you'll run the last step, which will be a bean stitch that goes almost all the way around. It does leave a small hole that you will use to turn your project inside out. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that last step and then we'll be finished with the machine portion of our bag. You may now remove your project from your hoop, and the final steps may be ones that you already know if you've made an in-the-hoop item before, especially a zipper bag. I'm glad I stuck with my white bobbin thread because it really shows you how, you how I left a little gap for you to turn your project. So what you're going to do now is cut all the way around your project and leave maybe, I don't know, a third of an inch allowance around the edge. And if I can give you a little piece of advice, Leave a little nub, if you will, extra right at that turning hole. You'll want that later so that you can properly sew it up, sew it closed. So leave a little nub there, but cut all the way around. So I'm done cutting out my bag, and I left my little extra fabric here at the turning hole. I'll also give you a little tip when you're cutting corners, and you probably already know this, uh, especially if you're familiar with in the hoop projects or sewing in general, um, at the corners you can cut at a, at a diagonal and that helps the corners really push out. When you turn your bag, 
you want to find the one side that is not sewn down right here and you want to turn your bag inside out. Now different sewists have all sorts of little tricks that they use to turn these kinds of projects inside out. Here's what I do. I like to stick my thumb down in the project, find the furthest corner, which would be one of these, push my thumb into that corner, put my finger on the outside, and just kind of clumsily push with my finger that corner through the turning hole. So now, if nothing else, I've got the furthest corner pushed through. See? Right there. And then you can just continue. I mean, there is no, there's no proper way to do it. There's no right way to do it. You do what works best for you. You really have to just kind of manhandle it sometimes. And get all of those corners out of your bag. And I'm sorry to tell you, smaller hoop ladies, the smaller your project is, the harder this is. So if you're making a 4x4 four four version of a bag, just take your time, don't get frustrated, and it does come out eventually. So, they're all my corners. That wasn't so hard. Now I take a chopstick, or you can use a pin that is closed, of course, like a writing pin, and I just push my corners out with my chopstick, like this, just to make sure, because you're going to turn it one more time. So you want this step to be as crisp as possible, so that when you turn it the next time, you know corners are nice and straight and even. Like this one's driving me bonkers. Just take some finesse. Okay. So there you have it. Now this is your bag inside out. It's exactly inside out. So the next two steps, for one thing, you need your zipper exposed. So you need to take some little zi little zippers, some li <laughs> some little scissors, and carefully, oh please, so carefully, so so carefully, cut behind that zipper. Cut the stabilizer out. And guys, I'm super clumsy. I understand if you're nervous about like getting scissors near your completed project. I'm nervous every time I do it, but just take your time and remember it's not a competition on who can get it done the fastest. It's a competition on making sure that you don't cut into your project like I almost just did because I'm trying to go fast. Cut that clip. Now, once you get your, your um, stabilizer cut from behind your zipper, and you can do, well, you can do this next step. You can do it before the zipper. It doesn't really matter. Um, you need to close up this hole that you made when you turned your bag. Now, you can use a quick hand stitch to close that. I've done that before, especially with a circular bag, because I like to try to help it retain its circular shape, like my pizza bag. So I like to do it by hand to make sure I, I know I'm doing it right. But for something like this where it's just a straight line, I'll tell you what I use. I use, it's kind of cheating, I use this permanent fabric tape. I grab a piece that's about as long as my little flap there. And I grab the sides of the little flap. I put my permanent fabric tape right there, and this stuff is super sticky. It's called, oh gosh, what's it called? Um, fabric Fuse, maybe? I talk about it in my tutorials. Look in the PDF tutorial that you got with the project, and I should show a picture of it. Now, tuck in your flaps nice and neatly. Remove the back of the tape and smash 
that hole closed using your sticky tape. Now, let me tell you something about this. If you're feeling clumsy and it doesn't look perfect, don't worry. Because guess what? This hole that you just closed up, look, mine's not perfect at all. This is going to be inside the bag. This is the hole that's between the outer layer and the lining. So you won't even see that. So don't worry if it's not perfect. Now, are you ready for the last step? I'm so excited. Find your zipper, push it open, and turn your bag inside out again through that zipper. And I'm so excited. This is like one of my favorite things I've done in a long time. My son is going to love this because he loves playing my old school video games. And there you have it. And you see how you can't even see where I closed that up. Zip it closed. And you're done. That's it. So I feel like that was kind of anticlimactic, but... <laughs> But that's the end of the project, and I think a lot of people, you see on the inside, you can't see those stitches, and I know a lot of people get very confused because there's so much of the right side down and flip it over and pin it and, and all that, but once you get used to these, you can make any of that style of bag. They're really professional looking because they don't have any stitches showing on the inside. They're great to gift. They're really impressive, and it only takes active time, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, and then your machine does all the detail work. So I hope that really clarified the process of making one of these bags. If you've had the PDF and you really just didn't know what I was doing, I hope this video helped you. I will talk to you in the group, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!